is is um, putting somebody in physical harm against their will, right? Uh, so what is disorderly conduct? That that's where you know somebody's like somebody decides to blare a speaker outside your house in the middle of the night. You know, usually like a 19, 20, 17 year old. Um, uh, it's yelling in the middle of the bar and disturbing somebody. You know, maybe you're drunk. It's these are not crimes that hurt people. These are not crimes that involve drugs. These are not crimes that involve sexual offenses. These are not crimes that involve theft. These are crimes where there's just no other crime that covers the conduct that you just don't like. Um, and uh, disorderly conduct, um, you know, if somebody wants to talk about something that's disorderly conduct that isn't also another crime that's jailable, we can talk about that, but this is not assault in a bar. Uh, that's a separate crime. Um, this is, these are, you know, kids <coughs> doing annoying things, uh, drunk people doing annoying things. And um, the idea of, uh, you know, the idea of fighting over jail time for that, I think, is uh, you have to recognize what this crime is. It's, a, it's the lowest level crime there is on Alaska's statutes. It's the catch-all when somebody really hasn't committed what the rest of us consider a crime. Thank you. Thank you, Representative uh, Guerra. Representative Ortiz. Thank you, Mr. Co-Chair. It's my understanding, and someone correct me if I'm wrong, but the original 91 made disorderly uh, conduct a infraction, and that 54 made it a well, something else besides an infraction. Uh, so, and they established a 24-hour period, uh, and then, and through the judiciary process, it it took it up to a, a potential five-day period. So, I called uh, my uh, particular uh, police chief and asked him, "Do you need five days?" and his response was, I can't imagine why we would need five days. We do need to be able to hold them for 24 hours because to take them out of the situation and, and, and those kinds of things. And so uh, I support the amendment because my chief of police said, no, we don't need five days for something like that. Thank you, Representative Ortiz. Are there any further questions? Representative Pruitt? Yeah, so uh, in interesting interesting point. I, I've heard uh, that for some police and, and troopers that this is uh, one that actually is fairly important to them. Um, I guess my concern with moving from five days to 24 hours is that we basically, the argument I keep hearing on why we need to not allow for more judicial discretion, for why we need to allow for um, uh, more tools in the tool belt of our prosecutors, uh, all of those things, um, it, it, it almost makes, me, makes it seem like that we have such a broken system that our that our judges and our prosecutors are always going to go for the worst case scenario. They're always going to fall on the worst case scenario. And therefore, we should, we should limit this as much as possible. I, I, remind, I think we should remind everyone, this is, again, of not, they may not impose a sentence of more than five days. It doesn't say five days. It says they may not impose more than five days. I, 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 maybe I'm an odd one out here. I have faith in our judicial system that they're going to make a judicious decision that will determine whether or not 24 hours is enough or whether or not five days is enough. And, and so I, I think that Instead of automatically, I mean, we've got, I mean, instead of automatically determining that our, somehow our judicial system is failing and that they're automatically going to go for the worst thing and that they're in the mindset of throwing everyone in, to remind you, some of the people on the commission are some of these uh, people that make some of these decisions. I, I guess I'm not going to automatically fault them to, deter, to, to, the, to the point of thinking that they don't have the mindset and the ability to make a decision to determine whether or not 24 hours is enough 
or actually even less than that. They could do 10 hours. Or whether or not they would, ma they would drop the maximum every single time. And so with that being said, I think it's good to have the tool in their tool belt to do what is necessary and needed depending on the situation and the circumstance for which comes in front of them at any particular time frame. And that's why I would oppose this particular change back um, to the uh, before Judiciary Committee. Thank you, Representative Pruitt. Uh, Representative Gr uh, Guttenberg. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm going to support the amendment. In our statute, this is the lowest, most basic element of a crime that isn't any other crime. Right? This is basically a cop on the street saying, I have to be able to do something. Nothing more is needed than to take somebody in overnight. If there's something required for more than five, more than a day or two days, or when I mean, you get arrested, you're, you know, in the evening, you're in until a court hearing the next day, you might have missed work, you might have missed school. Um, and having a tool that says just a day, just overnight, the discretion for five days should be there if you commit an actual crime, a crime that is chargeable on almost any other thing. But 24 hours is, is a, an appropriate tool in a lot of situations where no one has committed a bar fight is assault, waving a gun, doing other things in neighborhoods that, you know, that are more than just being annoying, or crimes, other crimes. So I think it's completely appropriate that, this, that the state has something and we are the policy makers. We can tell a judge what we think it should be, and I think that's what we're doing here, is a disorderly conduct is just throw them in and they get processed out the next day. I think that's a completely appropriate for the level of, of activity that we're talking about. Representative Gutenberg, Representative Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Co-Chair. I'm going to oppose the amendment. Uh, there's a lot of it you read in the paper constantly, the, the charge is reduced to disorderly conduct. There needs to be some discretion given there, it says up to five days basically. So if somebody gets arrested for mooning somebody, I doubt if they're going to get five days. But if they've had been charged with something else, it's pretty not as easily to look at and saying this person, you know, really does have a problem. They could go up to five days. I don't have any problem with that. I think that discretion would be used in that at that time on figuring out how long to keep them. So I oppose uh, Amendment 7. Thank you, Representative Thompson. Any further questions? Seeing no further questions, Representative Wilson, do you maintain your objection? Yes, I maintain my objection. Okay, thank you. If the uh, Secretary could please call the roll. Representative Wilson. No. Representative Friend. No. Representative Gutenberg. No. Representative Kawasaki. Yes. Representative Ortiz. Yes. Representative Pruitt. No. Representative Thompson. No. Representative Tilton. No. We've got uh, <laughs> stick briefities here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll find us back on record. If we could void the roll, and if the secretary could please call the roll. Representative Friend. No. Representative Gatberg. Yes. Representative Kawasaki. Yes. Representative Ortiz. Yes. Representative Pruitt. No. Representative Thompson. No. Representative Tilton. No. Representative Wilson. No. Representative Guerra. Yes. Representative Seaton. Yes. Representative Foster. Yes. Six yeas, five nays. Thank you, and on a vote of six yeas to five nays, uh, amendment number seven, which is 30-LS0461 backslash T.21 is adopted. 
So with that, let us move on to amendment number eight. Amendment number eight, if Representative uh, Kawasaki, you can make a motion to introduce the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move amendment number eight. Is there an objection? We have an objection. Representative uh, Kawasaki, if you can um, explain your thank, amendment. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a conceptual amendment I'll, I'll speak about after I um, just sort of talk about the underlying amendment. Um, what amendment number eight seeks to do is to direct the Judicial Council and the Criminal Justice uh, Commission to help them design and implement a project study uh, with risk factors about criminality. Um, currently, uh, the Department of Corrections does publish the offender management profile annually. Um, it has the data um, like uh, ethnicity, the reason why the person's in prison, the length of stay, um, uh, the age of the of the uh, person that's in the prison system, um, but we always miss out on some information that I think is very important to understand why a person is in jail, um, including um, some of the data that could be included in this uh, project study would include ad adverse childhood experience, um, mental health and substance abuse histories, education, um, income just before they went into the prison system, whether they were employed. Um, you know, things like that that I think can really address uh, why a person's in jail uh, to find out if there's ways to, of uh, <laughs> primary prevention uh, policy that the state can undertake in the future. Uh, the uh, cost, um, according to the Department of Corrections, um, let me find that. Let's see, the Department of Corrections um, from uh, April Wilkerson says that they don't see any financial impact of this amendment, but would like removing the uh, words pol uh, regulation and substituting them for policy, and I'll talk about that when I talk about the, um, the amendment. Um, most of this and the majority of the information is already captured through the offender assessments in the LSIR when they're in the prison system. Um, this would impact uh, folks that are in jail for longer than a 30-day stay. This information could then be used by the uh, Criminal Justice Commission, the Judicial Council, the, uh, uh, the AJIC, the Alaska Justice Information Center, and, uh, and other organizations in constructing um, future policy um, with, uh, with us. So um, with that, that's the basics. And then I wanted to move a conceptual amendment uh, number one to amendment number eight. And that would be the conceptual amendment I can actually almost read in. Um, on line 12, page one, line 12, it would be, the words would be instead of shall, of, or sorry, instead of obtain, it would be receive and analyze, or receive slash analyze. Um, in uh, line 22, uh, at the Department of Corrections request, it would be uh, under policies and procedures, policies rather than regulations. Um, in line six, page two, um, after the word happening, it would say requirements for collection of information under the subsection would terminate June 30th, 2024, which coincides with the, uh, the Criminal Justice um, Commission's uh, sunset. On page um, four, line 20, uh, it would say it would be February 14th, um, so that gives extra time before the Criminal Justice Commission sunsets. Um, that's also followed on line five, page, I'm sorry, page five, line nine, page five, line 24, page five, line 27. And there's one other section, I think. Sorry, one other section that does discuss Department of Corrections and it being uh, under policies rather than regulation, and I can't find it right now. 